سبحانه هو التائب على من تاب فلم يجعل بينه وبين العباد حائل سبحانه جعل ما على الأرض زينة لها وكل نعيم لا محالة زائل سبحانه حذر الناس من الشيطان وللشيطان منافذ وحبائل فمن أسلم وجهه لله فذلك الكيس العاقل ومن استسلم لهوى فذلك الضال الغافل نحمده تبارك وتعالى على كل حال وواقع ونسأله أن يحفظ علينا العقول والأبصار والمسامع وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جعل في السماء بروجا والنجوم لها مواقع ومن الرياح لواقح ومنها المدمر ذو الفضائع وفي البحار أمواج مهلكات وفيها الياقوت اللامع وفي الأرض صخر وحجر ومدر ومنها الجوهر اللامع ومن النبات حلو ومر ومن السموم نواقع ومن الدواب وحوش كاسرات ومنها ركاب ومنافع ومن الناس أهل للمعروف ومنهم في الشر ضالع أمور حارت البرية فيها فالحق إنما هو الصادع وأشهد أن سيدنا وإمامنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا رسول الله محمد الذي أقض للمشركين المضاجع ولد يتيما فقيرا فزهدت فيه المراضع وشب عفيفا كريما وأترابه في اللهو مراتع دانت الدنيا لغيره وأتحفته هو بالمواجع رعى الأغنام صغيرة وعمل في التجارة أجيرة فظهر من بركته البدائع إنه رسول الله محمد صلت عليك ملائك الرحمن وسر الضياء بسائر الأكوان لما أقبلت على الوجود مزودا بحمى الإله وراية القرآن يا رسول الله يا بدر الدجى لو أن إنسانا تخير ملة ما اختار إلا دينك الشرفاء المصلحون أصابع جمعت يدا هي أنت بل أنت اليد البيضاء زادتك في الخلق العظيم شمائل يغرى بهن ويولع الكرماء فإذا رحمت فأنت أب أو أم هذان في الدنيا هما الرحماء وإذا غضبت وإذا غضبت يا سيدي فإنما هي غضبة للحق لا ضغن ولا شحناء وإذا خطبت وإذا خطبت يا رسول الله فللمنابر هزة تعلو النبي وللقلوب بكاء يا من يا من له عز الشفاعة وحده وهو المكرم ما له شفعاء عرش القيامة عرش القيامة أنت تحت لوائه والحوض أنت حياله السقاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him and we show our gratitude to Allah We declare that there is no one worthy of our worship, our submission, our sincerity except Allah We declare that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the messengers of Allah the one who came with guidance the one who came with the truth the one who came with the Qur'an, the one who came and fulfilled the, ma the mission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are sending our blessings and our salutations to all the prophets and the messengers of Allah, starting Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, all the prophets and the messengers of Allah. Without, we believe in them without any distinction. And we ask Allah to accept our prayers. Allahumma ameen. My brothers and sisters, welcome back to another Jum'ah. 
another time, and another Eid, another weekly Eid. And actually, it is the time that we gather together as one family. And we gather together around the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Muhammad wasallam to learn something, to charge our batteries, to correct ourselves, to improve our relationship with Allah. And then we take that kind of knowledge and go through the entire week under the shade of the light of the guidance that we got from the Quran and the Sunnah. And once we come back to another Jumu'ah so we can recharge our batteries again and so on and so on. Today, I have packed to you a golden topic actually. It is talking about Allah. It is talking about our creation. It is talking about our Creator, the one who created us, the one who provided us with sustenance, the one that His blessings, His bounties are countless. And if we were to count them, we would never ever be able to count the blessings and the bounties of Allah. That's why we are talking about Allah, the one who bestowed Islam, and He gifted us Islam. And lots of people when we talk about love, most of people are talking about how much do you love Allah? And how bad in or how bad you need to, to have the love of Allah in your heart. And that's a very common topic. But the topic that I wanted to share with you, how much Allah loves you. How much Allah have this love to every individual. And how much you are in the sight of Allah as one of His creation and also as a Muslim and then as a close servant and a believer. And also I will share with you four signs, clear signs that you know if you, Allah loves you or not. Four things, four characteristics, four qualities. If you have them in your personality, that means Allah loves you. I just wanted to share with you at the beginning the story of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. On the day of the battle of Badr, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him many tasks. And Badr was so profound, was so essential in the history of Muslims. But when you move on to the history of Rasulullah and the history of the battles of the Muslims, you will come to a very significant battle which is related to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, which is the battle of Khaybar. In this battle, Muslims had hard times after the disbelievers came to attack them. That is why they have to defend al Medina. They have to protect it. And for many days, they couldn't overcome. They couldn't win. And Allah did not give them victory. And one day, during the battlefield, during the battle itself, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, tomorrow I will give the flag. I will give the leadership to a person amongst you that he loves Allah and his messenger and Allah and his messenger are loving him. So it's not only that he loves Allah and his messenger, and that is the equation that we have. 
If I were to ask any of you, do you love Allah? Yes. Yes, we, we love Allah. But if I were to ask you, do you think that Allah loves you? You wouldn't have answered. Because you are not sure. Because it is unseen for you. It is something that you think, how can I know if Allah loves me or not? That's why I came today with the recipe, with the ingredients that will show you if you have those qualities, definitely Allah loves you. So Rasulullah said, tomorrow I will give the leadership the flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah to a person that he loves Allah and his messenger, but the most important that Allah and his messenger are loving him. And that man, once he get the leadership, Allah will grant all of you victory. Can you imagine all the companions that night, how did they sleep? Everyone slept thinking of this gift. Who is the one that will take the flag tomorrow? And in the morning, they started to gather in front of Rasulullah. And everyone just looking at the Prophet, trying to raise his hand. Here, I am here, Ya Rasulullah. I am here, give it to me. But he didn't do this. He looked at the congregation and he missed one person. Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib. And they said, and he said, where is Ali? Bring Ali to me. So when they brought him, Ali ibn Abi Talib, his eye, he had something in his eye and he couldn't see well. So they said, they came back and they said, he is married, he is sick, Ya Rasulullah. Forget about him, choose another person. So, but Rasulullah insisted on taking Ali ibn Abi Talib and he said, bring him to me. They brought Ali ibn Abi Talib and he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with his right hand, he wiped over his eye and Allah cured it immediately. Allahu Akbar. He just wiped with his right hand to his eye and it get cured immediately. Even after that, after many years, Ali ibn Abi Talib, people used to ask him, which eye that Rasulullah put his hand on? He said, I was, I used to distinguish which eye by the one that Rasulullah did not wipe over it, it used to get sick. But the one that Rasulullah wiped over it, it never get something bad in it. That's Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what is the main point here? He is loved by Allah and His Messenger. Let me ask you one more time. Do you love Allah? Yes. Do you think that Allah loves you? And that is, that needs an evidence. I want you to pay attention to me because I'm going to share with you one verse in the Quran. Chapter number 5, verse number 54. Verse number 54. Allah said, Ya ayyuha alladheena aman, man yartadda minkum an deenin, fasawfa yaati allahu bi qawmin, yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna, adillatin ala al-mu'minin, a'izzatin ala al-kafirin, yujahiduna fi sabilillah, wa la yakhafuna lawma talaim. Allah said, O you who believe, if you abandon your faith, if you left your religion, if you deserted the connection with Allah, Allah is going to replace you with other people. Those people, they love Allah and Allah loves them. 
because they are. Then he started to count the four things that I told you about. So who is the one that Allah loves him? If you have these criteria, if you have those qualities, and while you are listening to me, I want you to memorize them. I want you to count them. And check yourself. If you have them, congratulations. Allah loves you. What about if I do not have them, Imam? Work very hard to get them. Number one, Adillatin ala al mu'minin. They are so humble with the believers. They are so humble with their brothers. They have manners. They have mercy in their hearts. They take care of one another. They shake hands. They check on one another. They live as one family, not divided, not separated. They are together, are so humble as brothers and sisters in Islam. They are not apprehensive. They are not attacking one another. They are not cursing one another. They are not backbiting one another. Why? Because they are so humble. They are not arrogant. When they deal with each other, they show mercy. They show adab. They have educate. They take care of one another as one body. They love one another. They respect one another. That's number one. Adillatin ala al-mu'minin. Number two. A'izzatin ala al-kafirin. What does it mean? A'izza. They are so firm with the disbelievers. Means what? They stand for something. They have values. They have principles. They have aqidah. They have something to protect. Especially in these days. Especially in these kinds of societies. Where you see the Muslims to fit in the society. To prove that they are qualified to live in the United States of America, they have to show that they have no values. They stand for nothing. No problem. No problem to get next. No problem outside to hug women. No problem to kiss some women. No problem to hide your name and your identity. Otherwise, they will not give you a job. You will not earn money. A'izzatin ala al-kafirin. They are firm with the disbelievers. They stand for something. They are so proud of their Islam, of their identity. That's number two. How many people were pushed to go to certain parties, to get mixed with women, to attend to certain places where there is alcohol is served and wine is served. And you know what, Imam? I have to accept. I don't know. I am afraid. I don't know. When he talks with any non-Muslim, no, no, no. I am a Muslim, but I'm very peaceful. I stand for nothing. No problem. I'm not that extremist. You know what? 
I don't even pray five times a day. Alhamdulillah. To just to show people that he is not uphold to the religion of Allah. If you need to know if Allah loves you or not, you need to fulfill number two. Firm with non-Muslims. When we say firm, that means what? Be merciful, be nice, be kind, but at the same time, keep your principles, your values. Do not go in something haram. Do not accept something haram. And let me tell you clearly, lots of non-Muslims came to Islam because of this attribute. Because that Muslims are the nation of values. Because we stand for something. We believe in something. We uphold to something. We have ethics. We have manners. That is the thing that made lots of people to convert to Islam. So upholding to the religion of Allah, that's an inspiring message to everyone. Number three, yujahiduna fi sabilillah. They strive, they struggle, they strive to stay and remain on the path of Allah. And what does it mean? Are you ready to quit your sin for the sake of Allah? If you are working in something and you discover that this is haram, are you ready to leave it for the sake of Allah with the firm belief that Allah will replace me with something better? Are you ready to struggle in this dunya? Because you are a special person. You are not anyone who can do whatever he wants. You are a Muslim. You are a servant of Allah. You have your values. You have the teachings of your religion. Striving for the sake of Allah. That's number three. Number four, وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَكَ لَا And they, they are not afraid of people to blame them, of people to criticize them. And I think this one, the last one, lots of Muslims here, those who are listening to me right now, you need to think twice about this point. Are you the person who is afraid of the criticizing of people? That people will blame you? You might have a brother who is a Muslim and he wanted to have a, a little beard as a sunnah of Rasulullah. But he will tell you, no, no, no. If I did so, they will discover that I am a Muslim. I don't want people to talk about me. And she does not wear hijab. Why? Because if I wear hijab imam, they will recognize that I am a Muslim. That I am a Muslima. And they will fire me. And nobody will hire me. I don't want people to talk. I don't want people to criticize me. I don't, I don't want to, while I'm shopping, uh, that I get some comments. Okay, I understand the challenges. But does that mean that you disobey Allah because of people? To please people, disobey your Creator? Is that is something? If you will say to people, no, 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 I'm, I'm not a Muslim. I'm trying to hide my identity because of lots of people have racism and Muslims have bad names. Listen to 
that? What are you gain, what are you going to say to Allah on the day of judgment? If you were really a true Muslim, you wouldn't fear anyone's criticism as long as you are straightforward on the path of Allah. I wanted this to be a wake-up call. Islam is number one. Allah is number one. Your religion is number one. And no matter what, no matter what is going to happen, as long as your religion, your relationship with Allah in a good shape, even if you will not eat, even if you will not find job, even if you will leave this country, even if you will not find a place to live in, as long as you are on the way of Allah, just your Islam, if you can preserve your identity, and also you can work, gain money, have prosperity, progress, getting houses, getting food, getting drink, having family, having all of this, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that is great. But what comes first? Allah, li Islami, li Islami a'ishu ana, li tawhidi wa dadini, naqashtu hurufahu ta'lu, ala kulli al-mayadini, bi khattin barizin yasmu, ala kulli al-anawini, wa Islami lahu irqi, lahu nabdi wa takwini, ana maada akunu ana, أنا ماذا أكون أنا بلا ربي بلا ديني أنا ما عملة إلا وتعرفني وتدعوني أنا بالدم قد رويت زيتوني وليموني صلاح الدين في أعماق أعماق يناديني ورايات التي طويت على ربوات حطيني أنا ماذا أكون أنا بلا ربي بلا دين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى صلاة وسلاما على النبي المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم My brothers and sisters, I know the time is so limited and uh, all of you need to go back to the work and uh, that's why I want to stick with the, with the time. But I just wanted to remind myself and to remind you as well that one of the most important things that you need after this message, just to think, yes, I might love Allah. Yes, of course, I love Allah, but I wanted to gain Allah's love. So let me count them quickly. They are so humble with the believers. They are so firm with the disbelievers. And they are striving in the path of Allah. And they do not fear any blame, any criticize in the religion of Allah. They are not fear of anyone to criticize them as long as they are on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah guide us to the right path. And may Allah grant us His love. Allahumma ameen. May Allah grant us Jannah to Firdaus. May Allah forgive our sins. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our sins. I ask Allah to bless our community. I ask Allah to bless all of us. Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah to protect our children and to grant them success, Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep them straight and steadfast on His way, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten our houses, our hearts, our graves, our sirat, our jannah with the Qur'an 
اللهم امين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا اللهم توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين واحشرنا يا ربنا في زمره خير المرسلين واقم الصلاه قوموا الى صلاتكم الحمد لله